All right, we're up to week 10. I'm looking at getting some vests for you guys. I've got to look into it. Get some vests. Maybe when you've come here 10 times, you get a vest. 10 times. Okay, let's begin with prayer. Okay, let's pray. All right, thank you, Lord Jesus, for bringing us here. And we pray, Lord, that you help the kids to learn and have fun, help them to uh, participate in the games. And I pray, Lord, that you help them to understand uh, the lesson we have to learn from King Saul today. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, a reminder again, my three-year-olds, sit quietly. Good, everyone's sitting quietly. What's the second rule? No talking. no talking. That's right. Sit quietly, pay attention when the bishop's talking. And if you want to say something, that's right. You put up your hand. Okay? Thanks. You guys are keeping the three rules very well. That's good. So today we're at book number nine. Working our way through how many books in total in the Bible? 66. Okay, we'll combine some of them together as we get into the other book. So today we're just looking at 1 Samuel. And you can remember 1 Samuel quite easily because, one, it's about the prophet Samuel. It starts off with the prophet Samuel, the first eight or so chapters. And, but the main person in 1 Samuel, we look at King Saul. King Saul was the first king in Israel. And Samuel was the one that anointed king. King uh, Saul, king over Israel. So remember when we looked at the time when Israel was ruled by judges, which judge did we look at? Gideon. Remember Gideon with his 300, how they drank the water, and he went to fight the Midianites with 300? Well, it got to the point where the Israelites didn't want to be ruled by the judges anymore. They didn't want God as their king. So they rejected God as their king, and they wanted a man as a king put over them. So God gave them what they want. Gave them a king. So he gave them Saul as their first king. So I've got this picture here. I don't know if this is what Saul looks like, but when Saul was anointed king over Israel, they chose somebody really big and strong. So you see here how he's so much taller than Samuel. The Bible says, you know, he was head and shoulders above everyone else. That's where we get that saying from. He was head and shoulders above the rest. He was really tall and everyone thought, of course, look at him. He's so big, he's so tall, he's so strong. Of course, God will use somebody like that. But we'll see later in 2 Samuel, when we look at that next week, that God doesn't always look at the outside. He looks on the inside. What's more important? Because Saul had... Big outward appearance, didn't he? Nice and tall and strong. Maybe he was handsome as well, I don't know. <laughs> and he was anointed king over Israel. So what was his first battle? Well, there was one of the tribes of Israel getting oppressed by the Ammonites. The Ammonites went to war. And then when Saul heard about it, he rallied all the Israelites together. And what he actually did is he cut up a cow. He cut up a cow into little pieces and he sent it around. And he said, if you don't come to war, this is what your, what's going to happen to your cows. So everyone heard the cry to battle. And they came and they rallied with Saul and then they beat the Ammonites. And that was the first victory that Saul had as king. And people started to recognize that God was using him to deliver Israel. But even though Saul started well, you know, he was big and strong and God used him at the beginning when he was humble. Unfortunately, he wasn't always like that and he started to disobey God. So I have this story here. There was another battle that Saul was asked to fight. And he was asked to fight against the Amalekites. And the Amalekites were a very wicked people that God didn't like because they were very sinful. So God told Saul, you know, I want you to go in to the Amalekites and I want you to wipe them out because they're so wicked. Remember like in the days of Noah when God just wiped out all the wicked people? 
Well, God wanted Saul and his army to do the same thing to these people, the Amalekites. He wanted to wipe them all out and leave nothing alive. So rather than obeying God, Saul decided he thought he knew what was best. So he didn't do what God told him to do. So when he went and fought the Amalekites, he didn't kill everything. He left some people alive and he also left some of the animals alive. And you know what he thought? He thought, you know what? These animals are so nice. Rather than kill them like God said and get rid of them, I'm going to use them as a burnt sacrifice to God. So rather than do what God said, which was to kill all the animals and not use them at all because they were part of the sinful Amalekites, Saul disobeyed God and instead decided, hey, I'm going to use this and give it to God as an offering. How do you think God felt about that? I don't think God was very happy. Well, he wasn't very happy. So when Samuel came to confront Saul, Saul still was adamant that he was obeying God. He said, well, I did obey God, except I kept, you know, some of, the, some of the animals to give to God for an offering. And you know what Samuel said to Saul? This is our verse for today. Oops. We're just going to look at the second part. So this is what the B represents. The B is the second half of this verse. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22, B, this is what Samuel said to Saul. He said, Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. What does that mean? It means it's better to do what you're asked to do than it is to give a gift, to give something to somebody. So what if mommy or daddy asks you to do something and you disobey, but then you buy mommy and daddy a gift? What is God saying here? God would rather you obey, and I'm sure mommy and daddy would prefer that too. They would rather you do what you are asked to do rather than give something as a gift. You know? So same with Samuel, oh, same with Saul. Saul thought, hey, I can disobey God as long as I give God something, it's okay. But no, Samuel told Saul, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. And to hearken, what does this mean? You see H-E-A-R, to hear, to listen, to obey, right? To hearken than the fat of rams. So this is the sacrifice that it's talking about, when they would give an offering to God. So because of that, the kingdom was taken away from Saul. So Samuel turned away from Saul and says, because you're not obeying God, then God has taken the kingdom away from you. And Saul asked Samuel, he said, no, turn with me and show me face in front of the people. And he took a hold of his mantle and the mantle tore. Do you see it rent? So when it rent, Samuel said to Saul, the kingdom is taken away from you as well. So because of Saul's disobedience, even though he tried to give something to God, he tried to give an offering to God, but because of his disobedience, he was removed from being king over Israel. And then another king was put in his place later on instead of Saul. So from that day onwards, Samuel never spoke to Saul. Samuel was a prophet of God. He never came to see Saul anymore until Saul died. So not only did God take away the kingdom from Saul, but he stopped speaking to Saul, you know, and leading him. So this is where it starts going very downhill for King Saul. So now he's going to go into another battle. So remember we had the battle with the Ammonites, which he won. And now he's lifted up because he thought God, God was using him at that time. And then there was the battle of the Amalekites where he disobeyed God. He didn't kill all the Amalekites and kill all the animals. Instead, he uses some of the animals to offer to God. So now he's going into battle with the Philistines. This is another battle that he goes in. But he's wondering, am I going to win this battle? Right? So he tries to ask God. He says to God, like, God, am I going to win this battle? But because God has departed from him, he's not talking to him anymore, he doesn't get any answers. So Saul does something very, very evil, very wicked. What does he do? This is Saul here. He goes to see a witch. Do you know what a witch is? A witch is somebody that does evil magic and spells and sorcery. 
he goes to see a witch. Now these sort of people, they shouldn't be allowed to live. You know, they do wicked things with evil spirits. And the Bible tells us that these people shouldn't be allowed to live. They should be put to death. But instead of being put to death, Saul goes to see this woman. Because God is not speaking to him anymore, he asks this witch to bring Samuel back from the dead so that Saul can talk to him. And the witch does. And Samuel comes to talk to Saul and tells Saul that if he goes in to fight the Philistines, then he's going to die. He won't win that battle. But Saul doesn't listen. And he goes to battle anyway with the Philistines. And when he's fighting the Philistines, what happens? He loses. Because that's what Samuel had said would happen. He said, hey, to, then that day, you and your sons will be with me in heaven. Because Saul was still saved. He wasn't, he wasn't an unbeliever. He was a believer. He was saved. But he was being disobedient. So in that battle against the Philistines, he was losing that battle. And rather than get taken captive by the Philistines, what does Saul do? He decides to, to kill himself in the battle. So he's losing, he's injured, and he doesn't want to be captured by the Philistines. So he ends his own life by falling on his sword. <laughs> Kills himself. And that's the end of King Saul. So what do we learn from the life of King Saul? You can look really good, you can be used by God, but remember what Samuel said to him? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. We need to make sure we obey God. Saul didn't obey God. And it didn't end well for him, did it? God stopped speaking to him. He eventually lost his last battle and he ended up having to commit suicide so he wasn't captured by the Philistines. So he started well, but he didn't end well. Why? Because he didn't obey. So we don't want to follow King Saul's example, do we? Do we want to be like King Saul? No. We don't want to be how King Saul ended. We want to be how he started, obeying God. But we have a perfect example, don't we? We have Jesus. You know, the Bible says that Jesus was obedient even unto death, unto the death of the cross. So we're going to follow Jesus' example and obey God rather than Saul's example and disobey God. So today, what does the ball mean? We've got some games, don't we? So we're going to play some games today to teach us that it's important to obey, isn't it? To do what we're told. 